Welcome to part two of our video on soil formation. Today's lesson is going to be on the four factors of soil formation that makes soil properties. Last time in part one, we learned about corped uh, climate. We talked about organisms, relief, plant materials, and time. How factors and process work together to be able to form soil. That's what we're going to be doing today. So let's get started. The first process we're going to be looking at today is additions. Throughout time, what takes place is various components add themselves to the soil. And typically, things like organic matter, it starts with organic matter at the top, the O-layer. As it breaks down and begins to decay, it's releasing some of the organic acids. And as it does that, it enters into the soil to create the A horizon. And then the A horizon, it gets mixed with things like soluble salts. And also we look, take a look at the precipitation. So water as well as other materials like animals are going to help mix and start adding to that soil that's in that horizon. But also there's losses. For instance, in erosion, whether it be wind or water, sometimes the, the soil uh, particulates and the soil um, components are actually moved, whether it be on the top or even on the bottom layers of our soil profile. Those losses are taken away, either by poor management or sometimes just uh, kind of natural situations. So leaching, erosion by wind or water are the things that help on losses. The third one has to be translocation. Now understand, even though I present them in an order, uh, this is going on kind of in a cyclic manner. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in any particular order because it's going on um, from day to day. But translocation, and when we take a look at it, it's, it's all about the, the uh, transportation of materials from one part of the profile to another. Mainly, it's water and other organisms that move things around. And when you've looked at some of the profiles, you didn't see nice, straight, even lines between one horizon to the next, primarily because it's not a perfect system, per se, and water and organisms move it at different rates. So, like, for instance, in this particular picture, you'll notice that white band. That's actually an E horizon. Uh, primarily, the, uh, um, the clay particles from the A layer uh, find their way by water, via water, into that layer to create that other uh, horizon that uh, we recognize as the E horizon. All right, the other, the last one is a transformation. Here's a rock that has some lichen on it, and that lichen, uh, it produces some acids and other things um, that start slowly chipping away on uh, the rock itself and breaks in smaller and smaller kinds of particles. And at some point, this thing is going to be transferred uh, in or, or transformed instead of this huge rock into soil that, that plants and animals can thrive in. There's also, like I said before, because it's producing acids, a, a chemical as well as physical uh, a weathering that takes place. And one of the things that eventually is going to take place is some clay formation. If you give them smaller and smaller particles and they keep be eroding away and, and weathering, you'll get to that. Also, another great example is organic matter into humus that happens between the O layer and also the, the A layer. And then at the end of the day, what we have is a fully mature soil. We can start on the right hand side, excuse me, on the left hand side and work our way across to the right hand side. Each one of you should be able to tell me what's going on, what processes are going from each area. What are the factors that, that make it happen? What are the, process, the processes that are going on here? And that's going to be one of your homeworks uh, as well as being able to talk your way through this um, progression of of factors as well as processes. I hope this has helped. We'll see you in the lab. Thanks.